Hello, welcome to Algorithms. Today we are going to discuss about how to achieve data migration performance and scalability using Azure Data Factory. And we will look at the copy activity performance in this slide deck. So these are the learning outcomes. Uh, once you go through this presentation, what level of performance and scalability can you achieve using ADF copy activity for your data migration and ingestion scenarios? What steps should you take to tune the performance of ADF copy activity? What ADF performance optimization knobs you can turn to optimize performance for a single copy activity run? What other factors outside ADF to consider when optimizing performance? So when we are talking about data migration activities, and in this case is specific to copy activity, uh, there are a couple of uh, resources that uh, the data uh, factory pipelines utilize. So one is network bandwidth, storage input output operations and bandwidth. And you also need to look at source data store, destination data store, network bandwidth in between uh, the source and destination data stores. In the next uh, uh, slide, I'm going to show you uh, a table that clearly indicates uh, uh, a a relationship between the data size and the bandwidth so this helps uh, in calculations of number of days uh, it takes to migrate uh, a specific size with a given bandwidth uh, to, to 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 azure cloud so now in this case you see from 1 gb to 10 petabytes and uh, this matrix clearly indicates uh, how long it takes uh, for 10 Gbps, for 5 Gbps, for 500 Mbps, for 100 Mbps, for 50 Mbps. So these are very critical uh, inputs from an architecture perspective uh, when you have to come up with uh, certain uh, uh, numbers in terms of uh, in terms of timelines as well as cost because uh, cost is also one of the major factor because it is possible that uh, you have 100 terabytes of data and uh, in certain organizations you may have uh, uh, time to uh, move this data using the normal uh, ADF activity and in certain cases um, you may not have time and uh, there are certain deadlines that you have to achieve and at the same time you have to be cognizant of a fact that when you are running these activities uh, your network operations are not just running these copy activities but there are other production workloads uh, running alongside so th those are those are the common factors that people look at now this table is very helpful as a quick reference uh, uh, when you are doing uh, or, do, or uh, designing a solution architecture uh, for any uh, cloud migration project now from the performance tuning uh, tips perspective uh, there are three or four areas that you can look at uh, first of all uh, pick up a test data set and establish a baseline so what you can do is you can look at the folder structure file pattern data schema and always pick up a data set uh, that is big enough to evaluate the copy performance uh, and uh, once you have uh, run the first uh, set of uh, test then uh, collect execution details and performance characteristics uh, from um, uh, copy activity monitoring and that gives you how long it took and then there are other details as well then how to optimize performance of single copy activity when it comes uh, to single copy activity means you have uh, Two different options one is if the copy activity is being executed on azure integration runtime uh, that's where data integration units comes into picture uh, and the second is if the copy activity is being executed on a self-hosted integration runtime now when you are using self-hosted integration runtime uh, it is recommended that you use a dedicated machine to host integration runtime and this machine should not be uh, shared with the data store and uh, you can start with the default values for parallel copy setting 
and uh, using a single node for the self-hosted uh, uh, integration runtime. The third one is uh, maximizing aggregate throughput by running multiple copies concurrently. So when you have already picked up a test data set, structured it properly from the folder structure perspective, file pattern and data schema, then you have tuned the single copy activity. Then if you have not yet achieved the throughput upper limits of your environments, you can run multiple copies uh, in parallel and you can run in parallel by using ADF control flow construct. Uh, and one of uh, such construct is for each loop. So those who have used uh, SQL Server integration services, for them it is kind of a no-brainer what I'm talking about. They can uh, use uh, control flow and then uh, design things in data flow and take off from there. But those who are uh, new to ADF or those who have not used uh, SQL Server integration services in the past, for them it is something new. From the uh, troubleshooting perspective, so there are certain uh, optimization features that you can look at. Uh, so data integration units, self-hosted integration, runtime scalability, parallel copy, staged copy. Uh, these are basic concepts uh, in reference to what I just explained above. So data integration unit is a measure that represents uh, the power of a single unit in Azure Data Factory. So, and it is a combination of uh, CPU, memory, and network uh, resource utilization. And this only applies to Azure integration runtime. If you are using uh, a self-hosted integration runtime, it is not applicable. And you can start with a default uh, DIU and then you can increase and decrease based upon uh, your observation uh, from the execution times. Self-hosted integration runtime scalability, what you can do is you can scale up or scale out based upon what you see on the performance scale. Parallel copy, again, it is very simple. There is a property called parallel copies and that helps you uh, uh, run a copy activity into parallel threads. So you can establish that parallelism by setting this number. It is recommended not to change these numbers, but sometimes when you are at advanced level, you can try and check the performance uh, if it varies. A staged copy. A staged copy is a very simple phenomenon. Means rather than sending data directly to the uh, uh, sync data store, uh, you have a, uh, you have an interim staging area it could be a blob storage and then you move data from this uh, blob storage to the uh, uh, final destination wherever you want to store the data i guess this is it from my side thank you very much for watching have a great day